So if there's one thing that comes out of the Marvels that is probably more entertaining than the movie itself is all the show media websites that are coming out desperately desperately trying to uh, cope any way they can and defend especially the movie but also Nia DaCosta so they want to defend Nia DaCosta because she is the first black female to lead an MCU film so they're not going to let her take the fall for this movie they're going to of course absolve her of any issues or any guilt they're going to absolve her of any responsibility she is a black female so she is incapable of doing any wrong whatsoever now we have an article here from Slash Film and it is a major 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 show media website that says don't feed the trolls and don't blame the marbles director nia da casa for the film's box office so you're gonna read an article right now that is just nothing but shilling for identity politics it is quite insane so let's get into this article guys from slash film but of course before we do if you are new here just consider hitting that subscribe button i would greatly appreciate it and like the video to push us out into the youtube algorithm now before we get into this article the funny thing about all of this is that they're trying to absolve nia da casa of any blame or any guilt regarding the failure of this movie but the funny thing is she wasn't even around to finish the movie i just did a video talking about the fact that she actually left the set and didn't finish the movie towards the end of it she wasn't even involved in post-production or editing or none of that stuff she wasn't involved in any of it so she left the film because the film took too long for it to come out so she went off and did other stuff and let the studio finish the rest it's just it is insane man that she is absolved of all guilt but of course she has that black skin man and that, that thing is an absolute shield in today's modern liberal world it says what a difference five years can make this time back in 2018 marvel studios was on a red hot streak and was gearing up for the release of captain marvel another sure to be box office gem to add to its figurative infinity gauntlet it's easy to forget just how much awful people on the internet had it out for the house of ideas first solo woman-led marvel cinematic universe film especially when star brie larson dared to use her platform to highlight the staggering lack of inclusive among the ranks of the press but despite the chorus of clowns online chanting go woke go broke it's actually get woke go broke you dumb bitch but of course you're gonna get that wrong the film handily became a member of the coveted billion dollar club well sandy schaefer the reason why the film became part of the billion dollar club is quite simply because it was required reading ladies and gentlemen there is a reason why that movie came out the time of which it did it was interjected at the hottest point of the mcu without that hot point in the mcu that movie would not have done nowhere near as good if people could just skip it without feeling like they were going to miss something they absolutely would how do you how do you think i know that how do you think i know that sandy well quite simply look what happens when you take that same exact kind of film you throw it in there with no hot points whatsoever and guess what you get you get the marvels this is exactly what's happening right now this movie is absolutely mega bombing to the point where you have to then cope so hard where you got to come out with this article talking about how everybody's racist and bigots you are coping so hard and that's because you realize you deep down realize you'll never admit it but you'll realize that these movies do not sell they do not sell on their own they need the steam and the hotness from the original mcu in order to make any sort of money whatsoever otherwise nobody cares about them they will skip it they will absolutely move on to something else that actually interests them because captain marvel was not it it says, uh, now that the Captain Marvel sequel, The Marvels, which is also a sequel to the Disney Plus shows, uh, has a new has set a new franchise low for the MCU box office domestic opening weekends, coupled with the film's middling reviews in his own review for Slash Film, Jeremy Mathai wrote that despite Iman Vellani's winsome turn as Kamala Khan, the movie is a little more than another mediocre, easily forgotten effort in a never-ending stream of products. It caps off a disappointing year for Marvel Studios, one that has seen multiple titles flop in several bombshell reports detailing the company's behind-the-scenes problem. Of course, the same crappy people who trolled Captain Marvel have been predictably quick to lay the blame for its sequel box office on the Marvel's co-writer and director, Nia DaCosta, the first black woman to helm an MCU movie. Why is this important? Can anybody explain why is this important? Why did you feel the need, slash film, to reference her race when she is just a director for an MCU film? No, no, no. You have to make sure that everybody knows that she's the first black this, first black that, first black woman, whatever who gives a fuck like you're the only people who care about this because you think it makes you look good if you talk about someone else being the first black whatever to helm an mcu film that's ridiculous you should just be happy that it's a female director but no no no. you gotta throw in her race because as if she doesn't know she's black already you gotta throw in her skin color and make that a topic of conversation 
It says, however, regardless of how you personally feel about her film, throwing Da Costa under the bus is racist, sexist, and yes, objectively inaccurate. Oh, no, it gets better. It gets better. So wait, wait. So, so you cannot then criticize a black female director? Is that what you're saying? You can't criticize her, her works, her movie, because that is simply racist, sexist, and inaccurate? Are you kidding me right now? So you mean to tell me her black skin is a shield? That's what, that's what we say all the time, that diversity people or diversity hires are just simply used as shields for these corporations and these studios to use as a, as, a, as a scapegoat against any sort of criticism. And you're literally proving that by saying that regardless of how you feel about her film, by throwing DaCosta under the bus, that is racist, that is sexist, and that's inaccurate. That's ridiculous, in my opinion, okay? Like, that makes, that makes this so obviously a shill media website. That makes her so obviously a show media reporter, Sandy Schaefer. This right here is precisely the problem. The casa is, to put it simply, going places. Well, that's great for her. Is she going places because of her, her actual films, or is she going places because she's black? Because honestly, by reading your article, I really don't know which one it is. It says her first movie, the 2018 neo-western Little Woods, was a critical darling, and her second film, the 2021 horror reboot sequel Candyman, while less well-received, did quite well financially, despite premiering at a time when the box office was still recovering from the coup lockdowns. Oh, stop with that nonsense, man. Stop with that nonsense. That has been such a bad excuse for such a long time for these studios to blame something that is clearly not the issue. Nobody wants to go see these bad movies. And what happened during the pandemic was people realized that they don't actually have to go to the theaters for every single movie. People, once they're taken away, it's like addicts, right? Once you take someone away from something for a long enough period of time, they're going to realize that they don't really need it. And a lot of people are like that. A lot of people are just going to go to streaming, watch it on there, not really worry about going to the actual movie theater. So that's what ended up happening. But what happens with that is that if there is a movie that is worth it, if there is a movie that people feel like they want to go actually see and it's worth the experience and it's worth the money, they're going to go see it. So if your movie wasn't that movie, then it's not because of the post pandemic anything It's because your movie sucked and it wasn't worth going out to the theater to go see. It says her going on to helm an MCU film right after that is standard procedure nowadays for Hollywood, where up and corners are frequently hired to oversee big budget projects after scoring a smaller hit. Yet for some reason, unlike DaCosta, nobody accused Colin Trevorrow of being a diversity hire when he went from directing Safety Not Guaranteed to Jurassic World. How peculiar. Anyway, there are plenty of reasons the Marvels misfired at the box office that were firmly out of DaCosta's hands, including the cast being unable to promote the film until the actor strike was resolved two days before it opened. And the fact that superhero tentpoles are no longer the dominant box office force they were pre-pandemic, DaCosta has also addressed the fact that she began preparing for her next film, the Tessa Thompson-led Hita, while the Marvels was still in post-production. Okay, the excuses are rampant, all right? I'm tired of this coping nonsense from all of these show media websites. You mean to tell me, okay? Captain Marvel did over a billion dollars, right? Let's put that out there. Captain Marvel did over a billion dollars. So you mean to tell me that the reason why this film is not doing over a billion dollars or anywhere close to it is because the likes of Brie Larson wasn't allowed to promote this film? You really think that by Brie Larson or the character or the character Kamala Khan or even the person who played Monica Rambeau, you think if these people were able to do their stupid interviews, you think that would have made this film do millions, hundreds of millions of dollars more? You really mean to tell me that? I don't believe you in the slightest. These actors being unable to promote this film was actually a good thing. They weren't able to do stupid things that were going to ruin the chance that this film had, which they didn't have much of a chance to begin with. So ultimately, you guys are making up these excuses, and then you're trying to say, oh, the superhero genre is not the powerhouse it used to be. Well, that's because in Phase 4 and Phase 5, it went from the MCU to the MCU, where it became a literal identity politics-driven mess that nobody wanted to go see. And you know how you know that's true? Because look at Spider-Man No Way Home. 1.7 plus billion dollars that movie made in the same exact time all these other female-led, identity politics-led movies completely bombed. So it's not superhero fatigue. It is bad movie fatigue. And nobody wants to see that nonsense. So you're making up these excuses because she's black. That's really what it is. You're making up these excuses all because of her skin color. Because if this was a white man who led this film, you absolutely would have been roasting it right now. But because she's a black female, no, 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 no. You got to absolve her of any and all guilt. It's ridiculous. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.